is um, an award-winning writer and an amazing photographer who published a number of books and written many articles in magazines like National Geography, Canadian Geographic, Explore and others. You're coming to the symposium and you're going to be talking about your latest book. That book, I think, will form the story of your presentation. You want to take just a few minutes and, and tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I think the, you know, the, your audience would be interested because I was asked by an American publisher to write a book about what the Arctic would look like in 25, 50 years based on, you know, all the things that are happening, climate change, political developments, uh, mining and oil and gas developments. And uh, I think, you know, one of the conclusions is that we're going to see, uh, you know, it's obviously going to get warmer and Arctic storms are going to be picking up steam. Uh, we're probably going to get a lot more fog on the coast. Uh, we're going to probably lose a few species uh, in the southern regions. Uh, polar bears will probably be on their last leg in western Hudson Bay and the Beaufort Sea region. Uh, grizzly bears are going to be doing very well, you know, in areas like the Firth River, the Mackenzie Delta. They uh, will no longer have to hibernate for eight months a year. They'll have an extra month or so of uh, time to hunt on land. So the book is really uh, really just trying to create scenarios. What is it going to look like? And I think the interest to your audience is that one of the things that I do talk about is that we're going to see some very dramatic changes in the hydrology that drives the rivers of the Northwest Territories and none of it. And I think that uh, probably the days of paddling Arctic rivers like the Thompson 
Nuka Kujua and the Nuuk are probably going to be biased by then. Uh, we're already seeing uh, water levels drop pretty dramatically in those rivers, and I think some of the more shallow rivers that you see in the northern Yukon, like the Snake, for example, uh, I think that uh, the upper reaches of the Snake are going to be. It won't be gone, but the season is going to be a lot shorter than it is now. And I think that, uh, like skiing, uh, as you well know, um, downhill skiing, it's going to be a lot more risky to plan ahead for a lot of these uh, these these trips. And uh, so, really, that's that's what the book is is all about. And I described to some extent uh, uh, how I went about writing this book, and uh, it was based on you know probably. 15, 20 trips that I did to the Arctic with scientists, with uh, the Inuit, the Dene, and, uh, and other people. Hi, my name's uh, David Pelly, and my presentation at this year's symposium is an illustration of the power of Inuit oral history. As some people know, I've been working in the Arctic, uh, largely uh, documenting and publishing the results of the Inuit oral history collection for the past uh, 20, 25 years. And I have to say that uh, I've, I've never failed to be impressed by the, uh, the, the power of the old stories that, uh, that the elders were able to, uh, to relate to us based entirely on the verbal accounts that, that they had heard as young people. Uh, often from their grandparents and great parents, grand, uh, sorry, great grandparents, which have been uh, passed down to them through generations. But we are losing that now, of course, because the young generation of Inuit, just like uh, youngsters everywhere, have access to all of the high tech uh, tools of our modern society, and so they're much less inclined to uh, to sit at their grandparents' knee and uh, and hear these stories. So I feel very fortunate that uh, that my timing was just right to be involved in recording really the last uh, generation of elders to have this, uh, this powerful experience of relating the old traditional knowledge of their people. In this particular case, I'm focused on uh, an area called Ukusiksalik, which is the Inuit name for uh, Wager Bay in the northwest corner of Hudson Bay. And I was contracted uh, 25 years ago by Parks Canada in, to document the oral history of that region as they prepared uh, to establish or to try to establish a national park there. That park has now been established. But in that process, uh, I had the privilege of recording the personal stories and memories uh, of all of the living elders whose families uh, had at some time or other lived in that Ukusiksalik area. All of those elders are gone now, but uh, the good news is that their stories and their knowledge of, of the, uh, the history of that area it, it has been preserved, and now not only preserved, but published in, in a trade book. And it's not very often that a publisher in Canada will, uh, will actually feature Indigenous uh, traditional knowledge in, in the manner that, uh, that Dundurn has done in this book. So I'm really quite excited about the, um, the prospect of, of seeing, seeing the Inuit traditional knowledge and oral history uh, celebrated in this manner. My name is Ian Evans. I live in the small village of Aurora, Ontario. By profession, I'm a chartered accountant. Uh, I gained my qualification over 30 years ago, moved to Canada and uh, lived in Africa as well. As a kid, I always pursued adventures. My parents encouraged me to never be satisfied with the ordinary. I joined the Scouts in, uh, in England, did a lot of climbing in Wales, and after that, I became very interested in mountaineering, pursued the seven summits, I climbed five of them, morphed into some adventure cycling as well, where I cycled around the coastline of Iceland to the Arctic Ocean and also across Australia on my own. When I became involved in the Antarctic expedition or the possibility to go to Antarctica, really that was a dream for me because as a kid I'd always followed the stories of Shackleton, Scott, Amundsen. Uh, my bookshelves at home aligned with Antarctic literature and exploration. 
And, and I was fascinated at my age, I was 58 when I became involved in the expedition. Could I take on this hardest expedition on Earth, survive, and reach the South Pole to become the oldest Canadian? And um, uh, the presentation is all about preparations, the expedition, and really walking in the footsteps of these famous explorers. So I really look forward to presenting at the symposium in uh, February 2000. and I am the director of Black Feather Adventures and I'm going to be speaking about Arctic Challenge which was an all-women ski traverse of Aluitak National Park on Baffin Island. This took place in April of 2015 and it was a group of 17 women, 14 of which were from the UK and 14 of which had never really skied before. Um, it was an expedition that was designed to promote gender equality and, in fact, diversity on the whole in the workplace. It was sponsored by a company from the UK called Lease Plan to foster this gender and diversity equality within their workforce. We met in Kiktarjuwak on the first day. It was about a 100-kilometer ski trek. Uh, ice crampons across the park. We had temperatures as low as minus 35 Celsius and as warm as about minus 20 Celsius. It was an incredible expedition that really uh, fostered teamwork. There were tears, laughter, feelings that they couldn't do it, then feelings of accomplishment. Um, I feel really honored to have been part of the expedition and really look forward to showing this uh, show to you. Uh, my name is Martin Cooper. I'm a partner and senior archaeologist at Archaeological Services in Toronto. I've been doing archaeology in Ontario uh, and in northern Ontario for over 30 years. And uh, the project that I'm going to be speaking about with Ken Lister, who's a curator at the Royal Ontario Museum is about uh, a painting that Paul Kane made in the 1840s while he was traveling with the Hudson's Bay Company and uh, Ken was able to relocate where the painting was painted and uh, we went back and uh, did some excavations there and our talk is going to be about the results of the excavation which I think you'll find interesting. Sylvain Tremblay, I'm from Quebec City. 
I'm born in France, and I got from my French mother my travel interest, and surely from my Canadian father my sense of well-being in the wilderness. I'm a biologist and a outdoor guide. I'm a North lover, quite busy in summertime, but my jobs are giving me some wide padding opportunities sometimes. My presentation is about the rivers I paddle in northern Quebec, the Natashquan River from the Labrador to the San Lawrence Gulf, and the Leaf River in Nunavik flowing into Niagara Bay. Two great rivers I travel lightly and uh, simply during late canoe season. I want to tell you how much fun I had on those rivers, exploring some north coast waterfalls and canyons, or trying to reach the Ngava coast before the freeze up. Having trouble to find the expected wildlife, and uh, sleeping sometimes on the wet campsites and having almost nothing for lunch, making those trips challenging and even fun to tell you.